God, we thank you for your glory. Indeed, your glory you share with no one, certainly not with any man. But we, in Christ Jesus, are being transformed from glory to glory. Indeed, from glory to glory. Because in Christ Jesus, the veil is removed. It is only in Christ Jesus that, Lord, the veil is taken away therefore we gather here lord in the name of jesus believing and knowing the lord you are with us here this morning we present ourselves first to you the lord you might look at each and every one of us for we are your children called by your name because lord you have called us into your house give us your word give us your spirit Grant us to receive blessings for the day and indeed for the week. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you have heard this our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all be seated. Last week, we began to look at From Glory to Glory, Part 1. From glory to glory, the title of the message, from glory to glory. And we're going to, again, look at what the Bible says about the glory. And last week, we demonstrated in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, what glory means. What glory means. Um, and we all were left, none of us was left in any doubt that the glory of God is upon us all. Church, may God's glory be upon you all. Yeah. And may the glory continue to be upon you all. Yeah. After the church service, when most of you had left, one of my daughters came and the enemy is trying to attack. I don't know whether she's here this morning. The enemy is trying to worry her. Enemy is trying to attack her. Is, is he here this morning? Uh, what's her name again? Is he Sinam or is she here? She's here? She, why is she not here? <laughs> because she was miraculously healed last week. She's gone somewhere. She, she has to go somewhere. Okoyefa. Okoyejma. Okoyejma Sundays. That's the mother. So last week, after we see this year every day, it's not something new. In fact, we have become used to it. This is a healing ministry. A healing ministry. And uh, indeed, there are some who don't believe that. God can heal. They think that only doctors heal. I'm a doctor, and I know that it's not everything that we can heal, but God can heal everything. And may God heal, may God heal you this morning. Amen. So after a church service, her mother brought her, 20, 23 years old, eh? 21 years old, yes. Um, beautiful young lady. And... Um, she had this ulcer, what looked like ulcer, severe abdominal pains here. We call it epigastric pains. Very, very painful, burning pains. Can't eat. Sometimes I can't even breathe. And she's been to hospitals, spent a lot of money, and a lot of tests, 
no improvement. The fact is that I've been a, for, I've been a doctor for 44 years now in church. I've been saying that behind uh, the root cause of every sickness, there's an evil spirit. We doctors have names for every sickness. We give names to whether ulcer, whatever it is, we have names for them. But the, the, the cause of them all are evil spirits. The Bible says that um, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good, healing all, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. He was healing them because they were oppressed by the devil. So when the devil was cast out, they see their healing. And that's what we see here every day. So this Essena, my daughter, came, and in fact, she was in trouble. And I was, it was the end of the service, so I was tired. You know, yes, last week we did a lot of ministration, so I was exhausted. So I was tempted to say, oh, uh, go and come on Friday. But I know that even we doctors, we don't say that to our patients. When a patient comes sick, they say, go and come next week. No. So, uh, in fact, I was very tempted to ask her to go and come on Friday when, when it will be our next service, or even today. But then, talking about the glory of God, whilst I was talking to her, and I said, why didn't I hear her? The mother was standing beside us. As I was talking, I was about to ask her to go and come, I noticed that the glory that was on me, which is also on you, was beginning to affect the evil spirit behind the sickness. I began to see that the evil spirit was beginning to tremble. So I said, the, the glory, so I said, glory. glory. So I said, okay, if the glory is working, why don't I take advantage? <laughs> I mean, I, this one, I don't postpone. The glory is working already. So I began to pray for her. And within less than a minute, the spirit manifested. They have to be manifested. They have to manifest. They can't stand the glory. They can't stand the, the name of Jesus. They can't stand the fire of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit began to manifest. And of course, in Jesus' name, um, they said a lot of things. I, I, asked, I asked them to go. It didn't take more than five minutes. We don't take hours to do deliverance here in this church. And the evil spirit just left her, and again, I could smell that foul smell. And then she was healed. As soon as the spirit left her, I said, do you have any more pain? He said, hey, pain no call. Then as a, as a doctor, we know how we are examining for ulcer. So I began to do what you call deep palpation. And, 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 and she was, that is it. And I asked the mother now, she said, she's still okay. May God do so for you also. And may God do even more than that for you, church. Amen. That glory not upon you in your homes, wherever you are, if somebody is struck acutely ill, um, at least before the person goes to hospital to go and spend money on doctors and labs and x-rays and scans and pharmacy, uh, begin to pray for them. You don't know what the Lord will use you to do. Pray for the person and leave before they go to the hospital. Church, do I make myself clear? Yes. Clap your hand for Jesus then. <laughs> so I asked her to come and I wanted to see how, whether she was able to maintain her healing. Because sometimes when the demons go and the person is not strong enough, they come back. They come back even with more others. But I'm told that she's going to work. That means that she's well. And the mother says she's, she's very, very well. So you can say today the mother is so happy. Her mother is so happy, smiling all the way. Because you don't have to spend your money on doctors anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians 3, verses 7 to 18.
the reason why I we we don't go around doing the because there are many who just want to take advantage. They don't want to give their life to Jesus. They want the healing. And when they are, when they are healed, they get their miracle. That is it. And that's one thing I, I don't like. Now, 2 Corinthians 3, beginning from verse 7 and ending at verse 18. And I'm going to read slowly so we have time to actually understand what the Word of God is saying here. Verse 7 says, But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance which glory was passing away how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious for if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Spirit is the, sorry, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding us in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, in this scripture, I can see that from verses 7 to um, 13, the Word of God is making a comparison between two glories. There's a comparison of two glories. The glory that was in the Old Testament covenant and the glory which is now in the New Testament covenant in which we all stand now. And if you think Moses was a great man of God, if you think King David was a mighty man of God, King Solomon, our church fathers, fathers, if you thought they were mighty and great men of God, the Bible is saying that the glory that we have now, what we have now, by far exceeds what they had. It exceeds what they had. Which means that God has given us a lot more than he gave to Moses, he gave to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, whom we all admire. So when we go back to our text, the Bible is saying here, verse 7, that, but if the glory of, if the ministry of death, so the ministry of death, 
that are referring to the Old Testament ministry led by Moses and the others. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. That glory was even passing away. It was transient. It was temporary. Because every time Moses went into the presence of God, only Moses was allowed into the presence of God. And every time he did so, he came out with his face shining. There was bright light shining from him that the people could not look at. The, 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 the Israel could not look at him. They couldn't look at his face. So Moses had to put a veil over his face so he could talk to his brethren face to face. Because of the glory of having been into the presence of God. Now, we come here and we are in the presence of God. In fact, we are now even closer to God than those people were. And the Bible is saying that now, because of that, we also have glory, which is, which is greater than what Moses had. Now, verse 8 says, verse 8, <clears throat> how will the ministry, now he said, if Moses, is, because the, 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 the ministry of Moses was glorious, which was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit in which we are now not be more glorious? Church, are you with me? Yes. yes. How will it not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation, that's the Moses' ministry, had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. What we have now exceeds much more. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. Now, Bible said when you when you you put Moses' glory, the old covenant glory, side by side with the glory of the new covenant in which we are now, the old testament in comparison had no glory at all. By comparison, had no glory. And yet Moses' face shined. There was this bright light so that his, his, his colleagues, his contemporaries couldn't look. His brethren could look, couldn't look at him in the face. Now, verse 11. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. This was where we ended last week. So, the Bible is saying here, now, because we know that we have now much more glory than the people of old, therefore, we use boldness of speech we are bold in declaring the word of God. We are bold in saying that. We, are, we, 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 don't, we don't pull punches. We are not shy. We are not ashamed. We are not timid. We have boldness in what we are saying. God, we know what we are talking about. Unlike then, Bible is saying that even what we are doing now, compared to Moses, Moses was shy. Moses, who, whose face was even shining, he was like shy and hiding. Hiding behind a veil. He was not as bold as we are now because the glory that was radiating from his face was fading. It used to fade. And therefore, it was passing away. We, right now, we have a glory that has not fade. Church, may your glory never fade. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And I told about the uh, I give an illustration of um, Christians who went for an all-night prayer meeting. And uh, when they were coming home in the morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., uh, there was somebody in the neighborhood who was known to be a witch. And this person was sweeping, sweeping, 
a compound. And these brethren were coming home from an all-night prayer meeting. And she happened to lift her eyes and saw them, and then she, she couldn't look at them. And she said, in Ghana, I mean, here, Pelo, this, this person was a Ghana. Look at how their faces are shining. I can't look at their faces. And so, oh, and him, is he saying, I mean, here, And you've seen that when you are doing deliverance here, a lot of times when you do that, the demons turn their, they turn their back towards us. They turn their back towards us. They can't look at us, they can't look at you. And I also told a, a, a case of where I had, I had to go and meet a certain man many years ago, and the man was a, a, a Buddhist grandmaster. I had to go and discuss something with him. A Buddhist grandmaster, a Buddhist. And he brought out two chairs, and when he brought out the two chairs, instead of us facing each other, he put his chair in such a way that he was facing, whilst I was facing this way, he was facing that way. He couldn't look at me in the face. I can give many examples, many examples. And for about 30 minutes that we were talking, he couldn't look at me in the face. This way, and I will look at him. That's how you talk to somebody. You put your chair so that you are facing this way. The person having a meeting with you. Another, another example, when, when I was at Teshin, and they traditionally said we shouldn't drum that, those days. One, well, it was even a wedding, wedding ceremony. Sorry, they came and t- remember they came and took our drums by force away, and I and some elders we followed them to the the Wulomos, where they took the drums, the Wulomos um, house, to go and get our drums back because they were brand new drums that we had just bought, very expensive. So when they went, they said the man was dressing up, so we sat in the hall waiting for him with his, um, you know, what do you call it? the boys who came to take the drums were waiting. Then when he came out of the, bed, he came out of the bedroom, entered the hall, where sit, then he stopped. This is a true story, he stopped. Then he looked at us, and you know what he said? You know what he said? He said, ah, you're here, you're this, what this was it? Yeah, here. When you how do you say put that in tree? When you are there, when you move, I say when you move, when you Uh huh. Yeah, here and you move yam. Yeah, here and you move yam. When you move, anyway, you can. You know what I'm talking about. But we were also surprised because we didn't see our faces and you move yam. But he saw it, and then you know what he said. He said. Give them their drums. We were the first church ever to have our drums taken away, and we went and claimed the drums back from the Wuromon's house. Unfortunately for us, that the next Sunday, the next day, Sunday, when we went to church, God said, why did, why did we go to that place? That place, you know what God said? He said that place, that place is a defied place. We shouldn't have gone there. He, God, will have known how he would need them bring the drones back. But we shouldn't have gone there. We shouldn't go there again. We should not go there again. The place is defiled. We shouldn't go there again. I can give you many examples. So when I say that the glory of God is upon you, church, you better believe me. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, for, from... Now we're talking about glory, 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 and how glorious the glory is. Now, from verse 14, let's say from verse 12. Let's look at it from verse 12 again. From verse 12, it says, Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, Moses was not bold, who put a veil over his face. So that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. Now, the Bible begins to talk about a veil. First of all, glory, 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 now veil. Now, verse 14. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. 
Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled faces, or face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So now the Bible now begins to talk about a veil. And the long and short word the Bible is saying that if you don't have Christ Jesus, if you are not in Christ Jesus, there's a veil over your faith. There's a, veil, a spiritual veil over your life. A spiritual veil over your, your mind. A spiritual veil over your eyes. There's a spiritual veil. And we said a veil is a curtain that separates one thing from the other. So I'd, if you're on this, I don't see what is happening there. And if you are here, you don't know what is happening there. A veil, therefore, is a bad thing. Glory is good, but a veil is bad. And it is only in Christ Jesus that when you turn to the Lord, then the veil is removed. The veil is removed only when you turn to Christ Jesus. Unfortunately, there are many who claim to be Christians. And I'm not, I'm not deceiving you. I'm not lying. There are many who claim that they are Christians, and yet the veil has not been removed. They are still blinded. They still have the veils on. For one reason or the other, their veils have not been removed. But from today, if there's anyone in this church whose veil has not been taken away, may it be taken away today in the name of Jesus. Because see, when you have the veil on, then you are still in the ministry of condemnation. You are still living under the ministry of death. Let me repeat that. The Bible says, when you have your veil on, then you are like those days, those people who couldn't look at Moses' glory. You are still in the ministry of condemnation. You are in the ministry of death. It means that though you are in the church, God doesn't even know you. God does not know you. But I know that in this church, God knows every one of us. Therefore, you must have no doubt. You must be sure. Be sure. There's something you call the, 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 the assurance of salvation. As a believer, you must have the boldness, assurance that you have salvation. You see, Moses' physical, physical veil... Therefore, stand for a spiritual veil which prevents some who read or hear God's word from seeing and receiving the true glory of God's word, which is Christ Jesus. There are many who hear the word of God. There are many who read the Bible. They read Bible, Christian literature. But unfortunately, they still have the veil. For some reason, they still have the veil. And Moses' veil in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, represents a spiritual veil. And such people, one, even though they read and hear the word of God, they don't believe. They don't believe. Even their presence in the church is just a physical presence. It's not a spiritual presence. They are being present in the church. It's just... A physical presence. Can we imagine somebody in one of our branches does something wrong? He does something wrong and he's rebuked and he gets angry and goes to another church. Is it the same God? Is it not the same God? Oh, is it the same God or not? Imagine, Elder, if you have a company, let's say you have a company with many branches, 
in Ghana. Then one of your workers annoy, annoys you and uh, he gets angry with you, leaves your branch, and then goes to another branch belonging to you. Is he not going to meet you there? <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. And that's what some Christians do. The pastor preaches a word, the word doesn't go down well with them, they leave and go to another church. It's nonsense. That means they have not understood. They don't know what they are. They don't, they, don't, they don't know what the church means. And we see that happening all the time. We see it happening all the time. Or somebody may be in a Holy Ghost filled church, a very hot church, where they see the power of God every day. Then because of small flimsy thing, he leaves and goes to a church where the Holy Spirit is not there. God is not there. And he's happy there. He has gone to a church. Once he's in a church, okay, he's also in a church. Beloved, it doesn't work that way. Say glory. glory. We're talking about glory. Now, Second Corinthians again, chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. Second Corinthians 4, 3 to 6. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Three to six. When you get there, say amen. amen. Okay. The Bible says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age, that the devil, has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your born servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in the hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, in the face of Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 6. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The Bible is saying here that there are some who are perishing. And why are they perishing? Because there's a veil over their faces. The devil also has a veil that he puts on people. And there are many people who are carrying about the devil's veil. And what this veil does is that when they hear the word of God, or even they themselves read it, they don't believe it. They don't understand. They don't believe it. You don't accept it. There are three things or four things. First, you have to hear or to read it. You must hear. If you don't hear the word of God, the gospel, you can't, you can't get saved. You must first hear the gospel. Then having heard it, you must understand it. You, when you hear but you don't understand, you have to understand it. What is God saying here? And then having understood it, that you have to choose whether to, to believe it or to reject it. Whether to take it as a truth or to consider it as rubbish, nonsense. That's the third stage. Now, if you decide to now receive it, you've heard it, you've understood it, now you choose to receive it, then you've, you, you've, done, you've done well, you're almost there. Now, having received it, you live by it. Now the final stage, you live by it, obey it. When you get to that stage, we say that the light of the gospel is now shining on you. The light of the glory, of the knowledge, is now shined on you. And beloved, many people in the church don't get to this stage. They don't get to this stage. They don't even, they go to church, not even to listen to the word of God. They go to church because they want to, to, show off their fashion, their latest dress or their latest wig. 
the latest hair, hairstyle. You know, you have bought a new suit. You know, the whole week we are working. We are working. So Sunday, the only time you have, you have to show the neighbor that you can also look handsome and beautiful. Church, don't you agree with me? Yeah. You don't agree with me? Oh, if you are working from Monday to Saturday, you work. You go to work with your working gear. But Sunday, then you dress up. You spend about five hours inside dressing. And so when you step outside, what? When you step out, Become a everybody ah yes it's an angel I can learn it hey oh look at your phone I can't hear now you know people are people are talking so you also you take your steps and you know you know what you are wearing and people are looking neighbors are looking at you now they give some new respect that's how they go to church some come because oh the praise and worship oh if one is praise they are, you know they like the praises. They love their praises. Especially when you have good instrumentalists like we have here. And they are playing, wow. Those ones, they always come. After the praise and worship is over, their, their church service is over. They are just sitting, someone they need to sleep. Uh, waiting for the church to, 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 to service to end so they can go home. Various reasons. So they can, they can be in the church for years. They can even be holding offices in the church. I know an elder who, who had an LPG, LPG station, a very wealthy elder in the church. He owned an LPG at Sakumono. And um, he had employed church members. He had employed about five sisters in the church to be manning the station for him. And they had to go to work on, he would go to church on Sunday but you command the sister to go and work because they work every day of the week. Then when he comes back from church, he says, oh, how much have we, what, show me the sales. He has been to church, but he made sure that the sister don't go to church. He must stay in the RPG and make money for him. The person has not, he has not received, he has not seen the glory of God. He's an elder, but he has not seen the glory of God. Hello? Praise the Lord. Clap for two hands for Jesus. I want you, an elder. This elder is a military man, very powerful man, older than me. Military man. He was in a church. He takes a very prominent seat at the church. The one day I was invited to do an all night prayer meeting in that church. And I happened to be his doctor. In fact, I was his doctor. I took care of him his wife and his children, and I've always been their doctor. But that day, I went to the church to do an all-night prayer meeting with them. So when I got there, there he was sitting at the front. So I went, I went there to greet him. And I said, well, Elder, today, I said, well, Elder, you have always known me as your doctor, but today I've come as your pastor. And the, before the words were out of my mouth, as if this man, he was thrown by a bomb. He went up and fell. That never happened to me before. So the man, strong, in fact, he was a paratrooper, went up and fell before the ushers rushed there. Why? He was in this church. This had, had never happened to him before. So now he had come face to face with the, with the real glory. I don't know what happens there. And in fact, that church was passed by, the head was a, a, a bishop, one of the bishops. And he always said, from this never happened to him. And a lot of things happened that night. Many things happened that I cannot recount. But I just say glory. glory. So that after today's message, last week and today, when you go back to your neighborhood, where you live, hello, may all the witches there flee from you. Yeah. And I said last week that, no, yes, in the night we sleep. We go to bed and then wake up in the morning. But we don't know what happens at night. We don't even know what happens in our offices. We don't know what happens in our, our shops where we sell. You close and go home. But in the night, what happens? You have no idea. No idea. And when they come to you, 
When they want to attack you, I'll tell you what happens. When they come to you, the first thing they look is to identify you. They look, want to look at your face. When they look at your face, may the glory of God strike them down. Amen. I mean it. When they try and look at your face, may the light that will shine from your face strike them all down. Amen. Bible said they will come in one way. They will come in one way. But they will flee seven ways. And may they all flee seven ways away from you. We had a sister, my own daughter, who started a shop at a Michelle Camp, near Michelle Camp area, selling children's things, you know, nappies and things like that. And the first three weeks, everything was going on fine. Then suddenly, the sales stopped. She would sit there the whole day, not one customer would enter the shop. What's happening? So she could say, I said, was something wrong? There was something wrong. And she came and told me, I said, oh, don't worry, I know what is going on. After you have closed, then they take over. <laughs> After you have gone home, they take over. So you know what? Now, every day before you, before you close, pray for some five or ten minutes before you shut the, 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 the gate or the door. Then when you go back in the morning, do the same. She started doing it, and within two, three days, the customers started queuing again. She said, may this happen to you also in Christ Jesus' name. Now, before, she was going to Accra once a week to go and buy things, to stock her shop. Now, she began to go three times a week. May God do so for you also. In the name of Jesus. Clap your two hands for Jesus. So, there are some who are perishing. And they are perishing because the God of this age has put a veil over their faces. They are blinded, blinded, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. This light is not allowed to shine on them. There's a veil separating them. <laughs> For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has also shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Notice that, church, Moses will remove, Moses will remove the veil each time he went in to talk with God so as to allow God's glory to shine on him. Moses will remove the veil. In the same manner, in the new covenant ministry in which we are now, to turn to the Lord is to be open to the Holy Spirit. Some of these things, if you are not, if you do not, if you are not able to discern spiritual, they may look like abstract talking, may look like fiction. You can't. It's not solid. Do you understand it? What do you mean by open to the Holy Spirit? I mean. Should I open my shirt or what? Should I unbutton my shirt? Should I come in bare chested? What am I? Should I take off my dark, dark glasses? Open to the Holy Spirit. When we come to the presence of the Lord, what does it mean? So that the veil will be removed. It means that if only you want it, if only you are interested, first you must want it, you must desire it. Friday, I taught on, what did I teach on Friday? Those were, what was what the topic? Friday's topic, what was it? Somebody tell me for 10 CDs. What? God will not? Okay, I can't afford 10 CDs for all of you, so. <laughs> <laughs> and who, started, who did I use that example? Whose story was it? Who was the woman? Rehab, yes, Friday, Rehab. We are doing very well. We have all passed your BC. Now we are going to SHS now. We are going to RC. So it was Rehab, eh? Okay, and I talk about faith. That's talk about faith. Faith. And how, what the definition of faith? Now we are going to SHS. SHS. How do you define faith? Anybody, faith? What does the definition of faith? Yes. 
Oh, you have started from the back to the front. You tried, yes. The substance of what things hope for. Evidence of things not seen. Okay, very good. You have done very well. And I said, well, if I, if I ask all of you, what does it mean? You all give me different answers. Faith is the substance. In other words, the, the realization. Faith, substance is the realization. For the sake of those who are not here, just so I can also get a bit of it. Of things that you are hoping for. You are hoping for something. And we all are hoping for some things, whether it's business or marriage, childbirth, pregnancy, travel, finances. We are all hoping for something at any time. So how do you get that substance? How do you realize that hope? So faith is the realization or the, the substance of the things you are hoping for. But it is the evidence of things not seen. You see, so once you, 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 you have that faith, substance, realization, a time will come when God will give you the, some evidence of it. But the evidence might be processed. It might be processed. Maybe you are hoping to start a shop, business. Then you get a table, a table where you can sell by the roadside. That is the evidence. If you process that very well, you process that evidence, the things that you have not seen are in that. Eventually, it will become the thing that you have not seen. And may God do so for you also. I went to DT. I don't have time. That's not a subject of today's message, but just for the sake of those who are not here on Friday. Faith. And therefore, to be open to the Holy Spirit is when you come and you are purpose in your heart. And in fact, I want to be saved. Because Rahab heard that the Israel was coming to conquer Jericho. She didn't want to die. Rahab did not want to die. So you decide, before you even come, I'm going to check today because, in fact, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I want to get to know Jesus. All these things, they are, they are, I want to understand them. I want to understand. So my going to the house of God today is to go and understand these things. You are almost there. That means that when you come, as you are here, you are not just coming to... Converted, you are just talking. You are, will be paying attention. You want to know. That one, you are open. You see, then you are ready. You are open. God can see it in your heart that this brother, this sister, or this my son, or this my daughter is ready. Is ready. Don't forget Peter and John when they were about to enter the temple. They said the man had, the man had faith to be healed. So they said, look, look at us. They said, the man had faith to be healed. The man had the beautiful gate begging for money. They said, silver and gold we don't have. But what we have, we give to you. In Jesus' name, stand up and walk. And the man stood up and started leaping and walking. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I know that this church, all those who come forward to a minute to receive the Holy Spirit, you, all, you are all ready. Those who are not ready will not even come. When we say, oh, how many of you want to come for ministration? Some of you will come. Some of you will run. Those who are very ready will run. Those who are less ready will walk. <laughs> Hello? And others who in your own kayak. They'll be sitting down there at the end. When we have finished everything, then we go down. You see them now coming forward. <laughs> Hello? And I, I can see that we're not on, on yet ready, but all the same, God will touch you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you say open, that means that you come with a purpose. You know what you want, that faith. You, you are hoping for something which you have not received, but today I will receive it. And then you listen to the word carefully, you analyze it, you, you, you also do your research. Then when, if it's true, accept it. You don't harden your heart and just reject it. You don't reject it. I, I talked to 
Many of my colleagues who are doctors and, and professionals, and many of them, begin with, they are, they are surprised. They are surprised that, ah, someone, someone, someone told me, say, now, ah, Doctor, who na clinician pa na wakan kan kan same way. The okay wah ha nyam nyam sa bendu mu. That's what he told me. Nyam sa bendu mu. To him, wisdom is for you, doctor, at the consulting room. So on the way there, no. Now we diagnose oh neurofibromatosis. Now we check. Ah, or no no. And then we say that is to him. This is the thing. But we talking say oh anointing. He say oh he told me that now. Clinician panel and can he well clinician know you and then a cock when I hear any J Bu and in a clinician you are talking like a, 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 an illiterate. Hello? Look, we have had we have had intelligence, academicians, people who are highly qualified come to our church. But the things that we talk about here, they just can't they 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 they, they reject it, they argue, they dispute. And they go away, don't come back. Therefore, Paul said, consider your calling. Look at your calling. Those of you who are called. There are not too many who are noble, not many who are wise, not many who are mighty. Because those people, they believe so much in their own wisdom, their own knowledge, their academic credentials, their position, their money. Somebody came here, and the person said, he owns a petroleum company. And he said, if he had to pay tight, God, the money he earns, if he's earning, say, 100,000 CDs a month, that he had to pay tight, 10,000, is too much for the church. In general, okay. Because if he had to pay 10% of his salary, that'd be too much for this church. And he left. We see things all the time. So to be open to the Holy Spirit, open to God, is to put everything aside. Jesus himself left his glory in heaven, came down as a human being, took on the likeness of man, humbled himself, was obedient, even to death, the death of the cross, the most shameful, degrading, painful death reserved for the worst criminals. He was numbered among the transgressors. God himself did that. But, you know, these people will not open. They will not open themselves to Jesus Christ. And therefore, the gospel light never shines on them. The Lord is their spirit. The Lord is their spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Hello? Shall I say the Lord is their spirit? And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When you get to that point where now you have the light, the glory, the Lord is with you. Beloved, you have liberty. You may, you may be having some problems now and then because see, it's the problem that keeps us on our toes. If God is to come here today and, and settle all our issues for us, Hello? Settle all your problems for you today. And then give to each one of you one million CDs. Do you think that week Sunday you'll be here? Are you sure? <laughs> I don't believe you. Speak the truth, though. Do you think you'll be here next week Sunday? <laughs> okay. What about the next Sunday? And the following Sunday? <laughs> so it is a problem that keeps us on our toes. Beloved, that's what Apple said. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. God allows it. Sometimes God has to allow some of the afflictions. Like how American God is sleeping now, it's an affliction. <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord will deliver you from them all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, be open to the Spirit. Sleeping is not being open. Be open now. In Jesus' name, just say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I went to bed at three, 1 a.m., woke up at 4 o'clock. But I, am I sleeping now? Am I sleeping? 
I'm not, I went to bed at 1 a.m. And 4 o'clock, I woke up. But I'm not sleeping. Liberty. Can I say liberty? Prayer. When you have spiritual liberty, when you have spiritual liberty, <laughs> when we take it for granted, those who don't have spiritual liberty, the things they are going through, the things they are going through, you won't believe it. You don't believe it. You know, people come and they say, oh, but you are a doctor. Ah. So you, 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 heal, you heal physically, now you heal spiritually. I say, yes. In the consulting room in the hospital, I don't pray for, for people. But there are many who come to me and say, oh, this person, I am spiritual. I am spiritual. Spiritual. And sometimes when I, when, the, when I have pity on the person, if I am more bored, I need to feel more bored. Now, you know what I do? I just make sure I touch, I examine them by touching when I hear no Meanwhile, I'm not, I'm touching. And I'm conscious of what I'm imparting to them. Then I write, what do I write? Paracetamol. If I write para, they will not buy it. Okay, we call doctor, not para, para, doctor, para, 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 they don't talk para. So I write the, the name of para, so I see, I see, <laughs> I write, I, I write a generic name, the chemical name. Hey, I don't know. Hey, powerful. Citaminophen. What? It's paracetamol. <laughs> if I write brufen, they won't take the I, 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 ibuprofen. Sodium ibuprofen. I say, wait, I don't need a powerful sodium ibuprofen. Like, and they take it and then they are healed. They are healed. The same thing. And I will not forget one day, rich hospital, even this one was a Muslim. She was a Muslim. She came to deliver. Not in my department. Came to deliver. Came to deliver in the, in the obstetric department. And after delivery, she was paralyzed. A woman of her 32. She was paralyzed. She couldn't walk. And they pumped all kinds of medications into her. The woman couldn't walk. So I was there when the, the then head of the department I mean, he's there, still there now. If I mention you know, Dr. Uh, Sofino, he's still there now. So my colleague he came to me and said, Doctor, come and give us your opinion about this woman. This woman came, delivered about some two or three weeks now. Delivered normally, nice, but everything fine, but she can't, she can't walk. So I went, I went and saw the a Muslim woman. I said, I'm sorry, but we have been doing He said, She came from Nima. No, Ridge is close to Nima. So a lot of our patients come from Nima. She mean, Auntie. He said, ah. I said, yeah, I said, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I was examining her. I said, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, now look at, they have given her every medication you can think of. So I canceled them all and then wrote my own. The same thing, I wrote it. Next day, I was there when I saw Shroff, we used to call him Shroff, Shroff, coming with, daughter, what, what do you do for that? The woman is walking, you know. I said, oh, that is my secret. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, we see many things. <laughs> and we had this Alaji also came with his wife from Nima. What that mother Alaji came with, a, you know, that tall hat. And the, the wife said that the wife came, you know, uh, how do you put it? He's got, a, his legs were frozen like this, you know, waka. They've given her medication. So they call me, come and see. What can I do for her? Madam, then I was saying, I'm not going to be a big man in China. Soon, swing a man in China. No, I say, when you are a man, when you are a No, I say, I'm a man. And it's sad, very sad. And our father is all about me now, say, and one I'm a nana aka ho, nana ka. Oh, sa. <laughs> Rich hospital. One morning, like nine o'clock, ten o'clock, about this time, sa. The husband was standing next to me, you know, beard, hat, everything, gown, and everything, malaji. Now it's okay. I'm going to pray for you. You know, they gave this medicine. It didn't work. I'll pray for you in Jesus' name, and give the same medicine to work. 
So I prayed, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, heal this woman. I gave the injection, Hannah, and I was Hey, don't tell me that, see me that, see. So they stood up, went away. After about one month, they came back. Mommy, now, as I say, be Hey, I say, move. So now they call me. I'm, I'm there now, the, 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 the spiritual healer. So they came and they asked for me. Hey, don't tell me, mommy, injection, that's not So they called me. I went, and they said, ah, don't tell me, that's not a son's son's baby. Or baby, or something about me, and I said, hey. 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 So I told her husband, like, look, I'm going to do it once again. Your wife will walk. But after this, after this second time, I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. Your wife will walk. But after that, will you give your life to Jesus? The husband said, me, what, what, Jesus, why? Jesus, why? Well, he means what? Oh, yeah, I was like, he was even getting angry with me. <laughs> For mercy, he says, that is, I can I say, and go back to, they have to, you can't go back to Nima anyway. So I gave the injection, the wife walked. And I said, okay, who caught never be more? And the man be Don't come again. Ah, me, ma, me, ma, me, ma, and maybe I'm also, Yami or her, maybe, Yami, baby. Hallelujah. Hey. Praise the Lord. Just say glory. glory. Clap your two hands for Jesus. <laughs> so now, the Bible says that we all, let's go back to our text, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. But we all, we all means here, here means that everyone who has, his face, who has his face unveiled? Once you have your face unveiled spiritually, but we all with unveiled face, but we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the, into the same we made from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Bible is here is saying that once you, the light has shone on you and the glory is on you, your face has been unveiled. So now, you may not see Jesus physically. You may not see God physically. No, God, if you see God physically, you can't live. You may not see light. But today, may God open your heart to see the light. Yeah. The Bible says anytime you come to the presence of God, it's as if you are looking at the glory in the mirror. You are looking at glory in the mirror. You see the glory in the mirror. And as you continue to see the mirror, sorry, the, the glory in the mirror, the more you continue to see it, something begins to happen to you. There is a spiritual transformation. There is a change. It is gradual. It is not overnight. It is not instantaneous. It's a gradual transformation. As long as you continue regularly to be looking at the glory as if you are the way you look at your face in the mirror every day. I think we all see our face every day, no? So we all have mirrors. We all have mirrors of different sizes and shapes. Then that glory. Begin, once it's shining on your face, it begins to transform you from glory to glory. So that the glory that you have today is not enough. You then go to the next glory, and the next glory, and the next glory. Is that um, Patrick? Is that Patrick? Patrick, come. You know, Patrick, Patrick is my son. And um, Patrick, what is he saying? So he said, I may Uh-huh, come. You know, when pa you remember Patrick? Yes. When Patrick came, first, hey, he had a problem. Problem, and I, I prayed for him, and he was healed before our eyes here. He walked, he couldn't walk. He began to walk here. And then I think he went, and he came back. Eh? 
the parent came back. And I, I said, he should just continue to come to the church. I didn't pray. I, I, did I pray for I think I didn't pray for you. I just said, I should just come. God knew. Now, what name of the glory? I just, I get Patrick, just continue coming. Just keep coming. And I interrupted him. I interrupted Before he knew that thing was gone. And they have been walking ever since. It hasn't come back. It has not come back. Church, may God do so for you also. Amen. If you are here and your business is changed, your business is touching, business doing yeah, yeah, may the glory of God revive that business for you. Amen. Because in the business world, I told there's so much competition, people are using all kinds of powers. They are using witchcraft, they are using malams, they are using juju. But you, the glory of God being upon you, who can be against you? Patrick, we are using, we thank God that God has done this for you so that, so that we, can, we, can, we can now use you as witness, as a physical demonstration of what God has done for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if God will heal him, God will heal him. Why will God not take him very far? From what, JHS? To what, SHS? To tertiary? To whatever? God will also, the same God will establish him. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Kofi, bra. Kofi, Kofi, is, Kofi is my friend, I, my son, because I'm also called Kofi. Yeah, well, no, it's only Ghana that we, have, we name uh, people by, by their, their days. When you go to Nigeria, they don't, they don't name by days. Only Sunday, if you are born on Sunday, they call you Sunday. <laughs> but if you are born on Sunday, and I just say, Sunday, Sunday becomes your name. <laughs> Patrick, God bless you. Kofi, they are making you know, know Jehovah dear, why? Jehovah dear, Jehovah dear, in the name of Jesus. Say, clap your two hands for Jesus. <laughs> and the glory of God. Kofi is very good. He says, so if you have any work to do, I should call him. He'll come and do it willingly. If you have any work, I didn't ask him. He has asked me three times. If we have any work to do, I should just let him, let, just tell him. You come and do it happily. So may God's glory also shine from him. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And I'm Joseph. I'm not sure how I know, but we are the whole brother. I'm going to say, hey, why not my door has it? I'm going to say, I'll get seen and put it in my door. And I say, sir, sir, Joseph, I'm going to cry in Jesus' name. What's the joke there? Why? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Amen. Check. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. <laughs> Beloved, in your neighborhood, your house where you live, when there is a spiritual problem, don't, don't be like Moses who put a veil over his face so that people could not see him. He was like hiding behind the veil. Boldness. See what the Lord will do. See what the Lord will do. My church, let me warn you, when God uses you to heal one person, we can talk about two hours you. Of course, that's where it's from prophetess. I've got from who prophet, dear Ben. Or Pamania, or Pamania. Because God used to heal one person, you know. I work with you, I feel like I say, I say, I want to know. And I say, a prophet be a fellow of Pamania. Or no one, Timmy. You give yourself all kinds of names. If you do that, God will judge you. Hello? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I remember one of my sons from chapter four, three and four. Ah, I only, I, we only see him. Next, next I saw him, I saw him on Facebook, I was preaching, hey. And that my son, he was undergoing deliverance on the own way, yo. Apprentice on the way. One of my parents, apprentice seems to say, I was madam or that. be that. Apprentice, we were apprentice. We were apprentice. Is it possible? Your own apprentice. You don't see her again. Next time, you know, I could be in the, in the saloon. Or so I am, madam. What, 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 and I, I friend, madam, not a professor. Madam. What is she going to teach the, the, the apprentices? You know, a Facebook, I will preach. 
Then he called me one day that, oh, uh, he wants to come and see me. What are we going for then? Who called Krami? Hello? Praise the Lord. So please, I know that God will use you if only you have that boldness and not be shy. But does it mean that you should see yourself more highly than you actually are? Just humble yourself. If God wants to call you at the right time, he'll call you. Chair, do I make myself clear? Yes. Clap your two hands for Jesus. <laughs> finally, finally, let's look at um, Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews 8, 7 to 13. Hebrews 8, verses 7 to 13. Hebrews chapter 8, beginning from verse 7 and ending at verse 13. This one is all self explanatory, so I won't say much about it. But the Bible says here in verse 7 that. For if that, if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. There would be no need for a second covenant. Because finding fault with them, he says, that in the Old Testament, too, the Old Covenant, says, finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days are coming. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, that is us, we are the spiritual Israel now, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, referring to us now, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, said the Lord. The old covenant is difficult to keep. The old covenant, fasting and this, uh, what, burnt offering, grain offering, this and that, Sabbath, uh, Pentecost, uh, feast of, uh, what, uh, uh, this, difficult. They couldn't continue. Now, verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. In other words, God's word will be so much your mind that it will control you. Now, those who are true believers are controlled by the word of God. They are controlled by the spirit of God. As many as are led by the spirit of, the, of God, these are sons of God. The Bible says, those who are led, those who are controlled by the spirit, these are the sons of God. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Years ago, we had a member that I, I like very much, until I heard, until I heard, until Kosi Semeche say, this sister actually took a knife and threw it at a little child. Muzi A. She also had children. But this child was brought by her husband it was it child belonged to her husband's brother. And the brother, policeman, I think, was going on a peacekeeping, so let the child with the brother and the brother. And the woman said, no, I won't have the child. So, toddler, about two years or three years old. And actually was persecuting this little child. And when the child did something that annoyed her, she took a knife, threw it at the child. knife, cut, cut him somewhere. When I heard that, I said, ah, this sister... Has she got the word of God, <laughs> God's word written <laughs> on her heart and in her mind at all? How can you take, and how can you take a, a knife, throw it at a little child? Why, 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 why
Or you're innocent. The Bible said that the angels of children, they see the face of God every day. My angels don't see the face of God every day. Your angels. But the children's angels, they see the face of God every day. They have free access to God. Hello? From that day, I began to look at that sister again. Now, we, I began to look at her with unveiled face. <laughs> And I began to see some things. <laughs> she's no longer with us. And maybe I thank God that she's no longer here. <laughs> and where were we? <laughs> Verse 11. He said, None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least of them to the, greater, to the greatest of them. Nobody will have to tell you that let's go to church. Nobody will have to tell you that, oh, are you coming? Oh, today, you know, I'm not. No. Nobody will have to teach his brother or tell him, know the Lord. A bear is something that will come from within. It will come from within. Come from within. I told you that when I, when I first really became born again, all these years, I told you, yeah, that's my first year, first year they gone. I was a Presbyterian, and I thought I was good. Presby, you know, when, when they give birth to you, or they baptize you as a baby, they drop one drop of water on your head, that's your baptism. And then after a while, then they say, well, confirmation, isn't it? Confirmation, then they confirm you. And then what? Then they graduate you. But well, there's no graduation. No graduate. Anyway. Hey, my, my daughter is here. You are welcome. Where are you we, we come from who or from Tamale? Ho, oh, yeah. She comes all the way from Ho to church. Can you believe it? She comes all the way from Ho. Well, where's her corner? And she goes back. Because she loves, she loves this church. Many, many of you be content to uh, be attending, content to attend Aladura in Ho. Aladura. Oh, uh, if, if, it's the, if it's the only church there, won't you go there? But she comes here. Because there's no FCS in Ho. No, so she comes all the way. May God bless you, my daughter. So what, 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 where was I? What was I saying? Where was I? Tell me, where was I? <laughs> well, I want to know what I, you know. Where was I? Correct. You are, so you are listening. Yeah. So if God has written his word on your heart and put it on your mind, nobody has to tell you, let's go to church. You don't have to force before you come. It doesn't have to miracle service before you come. Hello? It doesn't have to when you are sick before you come. You just come, and you come early. God said, the time will come after those. I will write my, my law, my word, on their minds and put it on their hearts. That's what we talk, we're talking about. No one will have to teach you. No one will teach you anything. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. Now verse 12. For I will be merciful to the unrighteous. Church. May God be merciful unto us all. Yeah. For I will be merciful to their, to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Church, may God not remember your sins anymore. Yeah. In that he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. The first has expired. It's no longer effective. Now, what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish. So the old glory, the old things are all gone. Now, there's a new covenant. And like I said, as we, be, be, as we continue to behold this glory, glory every day, we, are, we get transformed, continually transformed into the same image by the Spirit of the Lord with ever increasing glory from glory to glory we begin to reflect what we behold which is the glory and image of God as the glory goes from glory to glory we keep seeing it receiving it there is a continual transformation 
till we get to the place where we are in the same image. Because God said, he made us, you know, he made us in his own image. God made, but yes. But we, departure from God takes away that image. Takes away that um, likeness. He made us in his own image. And God doesn't change. He doesn't change his, his, um, his purposes because you have changed. No. It's the same yesterday, when again, and so the fact that we keep on changing doesn't mean that God also keeps changing. He wants to bring you back into the same image and likeness. And that's why he sent his only begotten son into the world. And in Christ Jesus, the veil is taken away. The veil is removed. The veil is gone. In Jesus' name, amen.